Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I am Karis. We're going to be taking another look at Democracy 4. We've played uh, Prime Minister of the UK on the YouTube channel. We've also done France and Canada on the uh, Twitch channel. And I will say every single time I've played this game, and I've also done some offline uh, practice and stuff, every time I've played this game, I never get reelected. But it's always a fun ride uh, going through the initial term and trying to manage the economy and, and, and build public opinion and, and some other things. I've been talking about wanting to do a United States run, and I think it'd be really fun, even if, again, this is a game about, this is a political simulation, right? And it's just about, it's a sandbox game. It's about doing whatever the heck you want, just goofing off and just creating weird uh, realities and stuff. Uh, it's not necessarily about, like, it's not even necessarily, like, you know, obviously completely accurate, although it does try very hard to, to make sure that the policies have a cause and effect that is somehow based in some sort of reality even though it's never going to be balanced based on what would be in, real, in reality, because in reality there's thousands of variables for everything that happens. Or in this game, it, there's there's kind of a limit on, on how the simulation can be done. But let's do the United States of America, and let's actually do what I've been talking about, is doing a hardcore conservative playthrough. And we can, uh, sort of a religious conservatism, maybe kind of make the United States into sort of a theocracy-style uh, society, um, even though I guess we technically would be getting elected through uh, democracy regardless of that and stuff. But anyways, so I think that'd be really, really kind of fun and goofy uh, to do that, uh, even if it doesn't necessarily uh, reflect any of my views or anything like that. It's just, I think it'd be funny to, or, or not funny, I just think it'd be interesting to see if we can if we can have a successful simulation where we're going very, we're going against the liberals, we're going against... Um, you know, uh, public services and stuff like that, uh, you know, so we're going more of a free market in terms of economics, but then also going more conservative in terms of uh, cultural things and stuff like that and trying to drive up religious membership and promote uh, like religious schools and things like that and, and see if we can sort of create a, uh, a, a functioning society, uh, America, uh, the United, the, the theocracy of America, basically, or something like that. All right. What do we got going on here? We have antisocial behavior, vandalism, pu public nuisance, petty street crimes, all these things. So basically people are just loitering around and people don't like it. So we could bring this down. The community policing is trying to bring it down. Alcohol consumption is, uh, is pushing it up. Unemployment's pushing it up. It looks like this should be coming down on its own. Conservatives really don't like this, so we care deeply about this. Conservatives don't like this. It's also bringing up crime. This is pushing crime up, which is not good. So we need to think about how we can get rid of that. We have respiratory disease. We have obesity. We have um, doctor strike. Doctor strike, one of the things that can bring this down big is boosting up private health care. We could boost up private health care by removing the state health services, potentially which are bringing down private healthcare, also just increasing GDP and stuff like that will help with that. So if we grab this, uh, the state health services right now, uh, we have very minimal state health services. It'll cost 16 to go down here, but we would be able to actually earn $33 billion. Holy cow, would this actually bring us into, uh, would this bring us instantly into a... Uh, surplus we're losing 21 billion as a deficit that 21 billion is a deficit that seems really low that seems really low <laughs> in the united states running at like hundreds of billions of dollars a deficit anyways um so i think i think bringing that down right that could actually this would this would help get rid of the doctor strike I'm going to cancel this. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. We don't want to cancel the policy. I just want, I want to revert the changes. Yeah, yeah, just get out of there for a second. Okay, so so we could get rid of the doctor strike probably by getting rid of state health services and pushing it all to the free market, right? Get rid of the government services that everybody loves and all that stuff and that help a lot of people. Get rid of that stuff, push it to the free market, and then that will get rid of the doctor strike because the doctors are going to be getting paid more for their work. and They're able to charge more for their services uh, because people have to go in through the private system and, and, and stuff like that and and it, it can be more based on you know uh, so on and so forth so there you go so that's going to make the doctors happy right the doctors are upset because they don't think they're getting paid enough for their their work basically is what that's telling us 
Uh, we have an uncompetitive economy. How do we have an? How does the United States? Who's who? Uncompetitive economy for the United States? What 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 are you trying to say? The corporations are running to France. I doubt it. What the heck? Of all the Western countries, it feels like the United States would not be dealing with this uh, issue as as a crisis. Like I'm not saying it wouldn't be possible to have a trigger, but. So productivity is bringing this down. We want to bring this down. We want to keep increasing productivity. Apparently, corporate taxes are bringing it up. I mean, I, I mean, our corporate taxes are probably already relatively low, 15%. I think that's lower than actual in actuality. Um, wow, we actually have a private space industry. Let's go. That's kind of hype. We also have technology advantage. Barely right there. We're like literally right there. Of course, we don't really believe in science and technology. We believe in going over here and uh, making sure that the schools focus on fundamentalist um, fundamentalist teachings. This will actually boost up religious membership and reduce liberalism membership. It actually oh, it gets rid of it gets rid of some of those technology gains. Hmm. Hmm. I think the other thing we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to actually subsidize. We want to subsidize faith schools, faith school subsidies. That's going to be a really good thing for also boosting religious membership. If we could do both of these things, if we could do both of these things here and gear them towards uh, religious teachings in public uh, schools and in private schools, that's going to be a huge thing. What is our maximum right now? Our maximum is 38. Why is that so high? That's interesting to me. The other thing is patriotism. We want to we want to push the patriotism big time. So making sure that we maintain a high military spending. So conservatism, patriotism, religious ideology. That that's that's what we're pushing here as best as we can. We need more patriots as well. Just in general. It's saying that this is going to cost us 25 total, so I want to make sure uh, cancel cancel cancel. I want to make sure that we, uh, how much are we earning on this per? Mr. for turns 11, uh, 3. Oh, here, let's just take 11. Let's do that. Let's just say we're making 16, sorry, 17 per turn. 17 per turn. So that means six of that we're going to want to use here to, to shift that over completely. And then that means that we'll have... Uh, 13 left that we can use right now if we want. Now we do have the, the ob obesity issue. That's that's pretty massive there. That's pretty massive. How much was it going to cost to actually bring down the state health services? 16. Yikes. Yikes. We have a lot of things. We have uh, environmental protests. We have pollution issues. We have um, the gig economy. As the GDP GDP goes up, gig economy goes up. This actually affects trade unions and trade membership. That's actually this is not particularly terrible. It does capitalists actually like the gig economy. They like that it's doing well. They like that it's a thing. Car usage also goes up. That ties into, of course, um, environment. Uh, CO2 emissions, which ties into environment, our environment is not doing uh, amazingly well. And, and we have people that are protesting against uh, environmental uh, things and stuff. We have actually over here, we got gridlock. We have full on gridlock because we got so many commuters. The gridlock is actually traffic congestion. It's creating gridlock, which is actually, actually that's bringing down commuting. Because there's gridlock, it's trying to bring it down. That should actually... Is that a self-correcting system a little bit? Um, as there's more gridlock, less people use cars, and then that kind of brings it down until there's like an equilibrium there? I'm not sure. Yeah, the U.S. geography. We can't do anything about our... Ge like the fact that our country is just massive and everything's super spread out. Um, road building tries to bring it down. Car usage is off the charts. Like, it would be good to just, like, do a bunch of road building, like a big infrastructure project, right? 20-something billion bucks to do that. We don't have enough, but that would be, that would play into uh, kind of what we're trying to do. Hmm. 
this is the tricky thing about democracy, guys. There's so many things that we have to deal with. There's so many things we want to do. We kind of, I mean, working on the economy is kind of a big deal. We could fix the economy by getting rid of the state health care. 16 to do that, though. Right now, this is helping. This is boosting health, though. Now, here's the question. If we actually... Does private, does the private health care, having good private health care, that helps health. That boosts health. That does make sense. So, so the health thing is kind of a little misleading. It probably doesn't help it maybe as much proportionally. Like if, if we were to get rid of public health services completely, that would probably have a negative effect on community health in total. But I wonder if it tries to simulate like the poor having worse health and people that are better off having better health or something like that. Commuters are just absolutely pissed at us right now because they're just a total gridlock. And everybody at our... Actually, there's only about 40% of our country thinks of themselves as a commuter. Weird. That's interesting to me. It would cost 33 to do that. Yikes. Working on the obesity. Well, what we could try to do is we could try to raise uh, taxes on smoking. That's 32 to do that. Uh, it's 60 just to get it to there, right? And then it's 32 to get it all the way up. See, that's... Hmm. It's definitely worth just going all the way, because otherwise, if you do it incrementally, one thing I don't like about this game is it says it's 32 to get to there, it's 16 to get to here, so you think, oh, just go here and then pay the next 16 to go there. No, it's actually going to be, because it's based on the size of the the increase. So to go here is going to be 16, and then to do it again, I'm going to be able to get to there for 16. That'll be another 32 to get maxed. I wish this was more... I wish this could... I could do this leapfrog, like piece by piece. Like, this is 16 this is 16 again in the future. But instead, you have to kind of like, you're incentivized to just do these big lump sum swings. I guess what it's trying to do, it's probably trying to simulate the idea that you're not actually going to go from 25% to 75% like instantly like that. This is much cheaper. Bring down alcohol. This is just a, this is a way we could make additional income. Um, alcohol consumption actually does affect productivity. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that and let's um, let's try to go into some of the policy. Let's just activate some stuff that's usually pretty to help with the obesity crisis. Actually, refor man, reforestation. Conservatism, though, I think to some degree you could, you, I mean, we've all, the United States, I say we because I'm a you know, United States citizen, we've always had a very strong on, on sort of all spectrums of ideology. We've always had a very strong sense of conservation for our national force and stuff like this. Of course, this started under a, a, a lot of this was sort of led by, approved by both sides, but but led by, uh, you know, um, uh, Democrats like a hundred years ago, basically, uh, with, the, with the New Deal and, and, and some of this stuff too and, and, and whatever. But the idea of reforestation, everybody can get behind this. I mean, we need to get rid of these. This, reforestation is just a fantastic thing. It's going to cost us... Uh, actually, it says... Oh, okay. Actually, you know what? Let's implement reforestation. Let's just max this sucker out. Booyah. I like it. But what I also want to do is I want to do a health food subsidy. Healthy eating campaign could be good. Healthy eating campaign there. I don't know if this actually got maxed. That's food stamps. Anyways, we've spent all of our political capital. It is what it is. Hopefully that'll, both of those reforestation should help with the respiratory disease. Healthy eating campaign should help with the, uh, the obesity. Um, this, uh, I don't know what we're going to be able to do to pull. I think this might go down on its own potentially over time. Alcohol consumption actually causes this to go up. We're going to be reducing alcohol consumption. Okay, here we go. 
Uh, we have a public smoking ban. Well, again, we're a conservative. We're not a liberal. Uh, we're conservative. So the idea of reducing people's... Uh, obviously, we're talking about like on public property. So this doesn't even... None of this even applies. I think we're absolutely going to ban public smoking. Absolutely. But but ideal, but ideal But this fits in line with having uh, a, an ideology that that see this actually gets see the liberals don't like this they don't like this because it reduces liberty like actual personal freedoms cultural personal freedoms but no we're saying no no you will conform to to what we're saying there so a minor deficit of five billion oh nice so actually we're making a little bit more money than we were imminent situation here alcohol abuse how is alcohol abuse an imminent situation when we should be bringing down consumption didn't we raise up the taxes on the alcohol didn't we do that yeah, we maxed it out. Hmm. I want to find the public. Okay, this did get the healthy eating campaign did get maxed. It's a very small thing that we were able to do. We're up to eighteen political capital. Holy cow! How did how did how how so much? Did I not do math here? Ten, six, sixty-eight. We should only be getting sixteen per turn. I'm almost willing to uh, pass this. In order to be able to do one of those big sweeping changes but i do kind of want to come in here and reduce this down i do kind of want to just get rid of this are you sure you want to completely scrap this policy this will cancel all the policies current effects interesting can we scrap it and start making this money back That's interesting. That's interesting. Maybe it doesn't, it might not cost, cost political capital to scrap it. Obesity is no longer like considering itself to be like a super crisis. It's not flashing at us at least. Respiratory disease is going down. Reforestation should make a, bit, a dent in that. Uh, and then the reforestation sh should tie into environment and all these other things that should help uh, in a bit. It looks like, uh, what about this? Why are these guys more likely to protest? Yeah, the environment, it's going to take a while. It, it takes a while for reforestation to have an effect on the environment. It makes sense, right? Trees take a long time to to, to, to grow and, and do what they do. I think we just wait. I think we just skip this turn. Appoint a senior judge. One of our most senior and respected judges has died. And we now need to make a choice for his replacement amongst the nominated candidates. This individual will sit in our courts for a very long time, so we must make the right decision. Edgar Lopez has been a strong supporter of human rights. Whoa, we don't care about human rights. Making many landmark rulings in favor of, uh, of individual rights and liberties. He is also known for being strongly pro-consumer and not afraid to challenge uh, large corporations. So this person is like full on uh, uh, sort of left ideology there. Alice Reed is a household name thanks to her many famous rulings concerning violent crimes and her often outspoken views on the harsh sentences that she feels would be uh, applied to thieves, muggers, and shop shoplifters. Her often outspoken views on the harsh sentences that she feels should be applied Two thieves, muggers, and shoplifters. Okay, interesting. So this is a very tough on crime, quote, quote. Uh, this is this is too real, actually, in a way. It's funny. Um, conservative judge here. This is a conservative judge. So let's, let's do this. The Patriots, the conservatives love this. Crime goes down. Violent crime goes down. Liberals don't like this a little bit, but man, those are good gains right there. That's good. Imminent situation. Hospital overcrowding. Hasn't triggered yet. Private healthcare is trying to fight that down. Hopefully, as GDP goes up and other things like that, crime is on the way down because of that event, partly, and some other things. Good stuff, guys. Thank you. We got 34 political capital here. It's go time over here. Thank you, everybody, for watching that first episode, guys. I will see you guys in the next episode as we continue to make the conservative theocracy of the United States, of, of America. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I'll see you guys in the next episode.